so today I'll be presenting on the food product profile. And this is the work of not just uh, me, but uh, there's many people uh, behind this presentation that have fed in. So we have the Work Package One Food Product Profile Working Group, uh, and their members are listed here. I want to particularly thank Professor Noel Akosi. I've actually borrowed a lot of his slides from his great presentation to the advisory committee. <laughs> Um, also want to thank the gender working group members. Uh, a few people I reached out very last minute and were able to give their initial comments and feedback to the process. So just wanted to thank you. Uh, and more thank yous to the advisory committee, to Claire Hershey, to especially Dee on the advisory committee, Halle Tufen and Vivian Polar. Then describe its core elements and how we think we, we would like to go about developing it. So this is a particularly ugly slide, um, but it's just to recap on what Work Package One is all about. Um, so the objective was to identify quality characteristics of RTB products for different user groups using a robust and participatory and importantly interdisciplinary methodology. So we, it was conducted through a five step methodology, which resulted the fifth step in the product profile. So qualitative and quantitative data was collected in each of these steps, and each of the steps has a different sampling frame and focuses on a different part of the food chain. So a methodology is needed to bring this different data sets together um, and to be interpreted in the context of the project's wider development objectives. Therefore, it's not something we can actually calculate. So it's also important to put in context that there's a wider breeding community out there and there's a lot of engagement and motivation uh, of various uh, partners and players about constructing new and different product profiles. So it's also important for us that we've had kind of our eyes on what other people are doing to ensure that RTB Foods is aligned with those processes and actually contributes and improves those processes. So there's broad agreement from these different stakeholders that the food product profile needs to be based on interdisciplinary discussions, but also be grounded in evidence. And because experts in these interdisciplinary uh, discussions have different interests and different viewpoints, transparency and equity in the decision-making process of what characteristics or what traits are looked at is absolutely vital. So therefore the process of obtaining the food product profile is particularly important. So I'll be going on a lot about the process today when you may just be thinking, why don't we just get on with it with the table? Um, but the process is, is so important uh, for having a, a sound product profile. So let's begin with the end of mind, the core elements of a product profile. I think if there's anything you could take away, it it's really comes down to this. It's listing the sensory processing and agronomic characteristics of high and poor quality characteristics, indicators and descriptors of those characteristics, such as what is sour or, or what does it mean uh, in terms of length, uh, the quantitative diagnostics that go into how much yield do you get or how long does it take to cook and also gender and livelihoods information. So this is the construction <laughs> that we have right now of the product profile table. Many of you will recognize this because we've been working with this various versions of this table uh, to communicate uh, the core data that's coming out from each of the steps. So you'll see in the far left-hand column is the characteristic char category. So that goes from characteristics associated with the raw material raw material such as agronomic and post-harvest, all the way to characteristics of the cooked, ready to eat final product. And that uh, is, is including sensory characteristics. The next column is the high quality characteristic, what the actual, <laughs> the name of the characteristic, followed by the indicator. The columns that, oops, <laughs> that, that, that came out a bit early. Uh, the next columns all, all refer to um, what, what why that characteristic is important and for what consumers and, uh, and preference groups does that relate to? So is it is it women that prefer this characteristic? Was there a lot of data that said women like this characteristic or traders like this characteristic? So 
are there specific groups of people that this characteristic is important for? And the drivers is saying, why? Then there's also a column around priority. Um, and this, this, these columns are actually taken from the demand-led breeding template. Um, so this gives some indication of, of the priority. Is, is this something that you absolutely must include to ensure that, for example, we de decrease women's drudgery in processing? Um, the next two columns are around the gender and livelihoods impact. And for this area, I'll go into it in a bit more detail a bit later in the presentation, but it's assessment of the characteristics for the gender and livelihoods impact. Then we have the good or high quality varieties that are associated with those characteristics. And then the last column is looking at the evidence. So, okay, was it your step one report or step two report or all the steps that were um, that listed this characteristic as being important. So this is kind of proving to breeders, proving to the food scientists in, in work package two, that actually we've got really sound triangulated evidence uh, that this characteristic is important. So this other table here in mixed colors um, is just to say that the table also is accompanied by um, with some supplementary information. So while it's important to have high quality characteristics, we also think it's important to have poor quality characteristics. So what are the things we absolutely need to avoid in our products to ensure that there's a, that the qualities of it, that the product is of best qualities. Um, there's also a need for other measurements as I referred to before the diagnostics around cooking time um, and, and yield. And finally, I've listed here a list of gender and livelihood checks. And these are categories that actually the, the gender working group and other social scientists involved said, okay, how do we need to look at our characteristics to ensure that there's a positive gender and livelihoods impact? And what we did is we compared that to what is kind of international bet best practice, which is the G plus tools. And you could see that where I've, where the red font is, is that's where RTB foods may add some adaptations or changes to slightly um, adapt the, the tools for our purposes. So it's important that these characteristics are assessed for things like its impact on labor time and drudgery, its impact on the quality and quantity of the product, which could impact on, on income generation activities for people who are selling it. So, the process for the work package one pro, uh, profile in a nutshell. First phase is to prepare a summary report. And I know people are probably rolling their eyes at that point, but just let me let me explain a little bit more. It, it should really take about one day, 1.5 days, maybe even half a day, depending, depending on the status of your reports. The second phase is to convene or to organize a multidisciplinary design team. And they would really agree, they would review the summary report as a group and agree on the first draft of the profile. Okay, looking at the key evidence from the different steps, what are the characteristics we need to have in the profile? Uh, and for the design team, that has your gender specialist, food scientists and breeders will have that discussion and agree on that. That would probably take maybe one day to have. And then finally, to apply the gender and livelihoods or G plus assessment and to finalize. And I'll explain that, of course, at the end. So all in all, we think that this process in creating the product profile will take a, approximately three to 3.5 days per profile. So hopefully not too onerous is what I'm saying. So the first phase, uh, preparing a summary report uh, in, at its basis is extract. And when I say extract, I mean copying and paste the key evidence that you already have from your step one report of the state of knowledge, step two, gender food mapping, step three, processing demonstration, step four, consumer testing. So much of the key information is already in the executive summaries. And even many of you have done product profile tables for each of these steps. So it's really about copying and pasting this into a shorter report so it's much more acceptable. So it's also important to triangulate the information that's coming out for the different steps and then preparing a list based on that. So I'll show you some examples going forward. Oh, and just so you know, I can't see the chat. So do, if somebody needs to intervene and ask a question, please go ahead. 
So I made this table very last minute because I realized I prattled on for, for quite a while. Um, but what this is in the phase of creating the summary report is basically collecting the data that's in the far left-hand column. So you want your quality characteristics, both positive and negative, so that's high and poor quality, the prioritization of those characteristics, the indicators, so that, and when I say indicators, I kind of mean descriptors. So what is a description of that characteristic that gives a bit more detail to the food scientists that need to do further laboratory assessments? Um, and also, of course, the gender and livelihood information, because gender was uh, mainstreamed throughout this work package. Each of these steps should have gender and livelihoods information that will help assess the characteristics for their impact uh, that would help in that final prioritization process in the product profile. So you can see from the state of knowledge report, we have key uh, that the main methodology used was key informant interviews in a literature review. So from there, many people were able to extract agronomic, processing, and sensory characteristics important for their product. Gender and livelihood information, I put a question mark. In some areas like sweet potato, there was vast amounts of information, but other products, maybe not so. The second step, gender food mapping, involved individual interviews with approximately 80 people. So some kind of basic statistical descriptive statistics was able to be done on that data. And it could be triangulated against qualitative data in the focus group discussions and key informant interviews. So from these reports, we also have agronomic processing and sensory characteristics. We have a prior prioritization of those characteristics because we did participatory ranking exercises. We have indicators here, really at this step is where you get the very qualitative descriptors of those characteristics. We have high quality and poor quality varieties that are important for the product, other uh, contextual information. And again, here, it's really important for the gender and livelihood. Step two really is the most um, detailed uh, assessment uh, that we could find and the data is disaggregated. Step three. Oh, please. Yes. Sorry, just five minutes left. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll try to wrap up. I'll have to go very quickly through the examples. I'm so sorry. Um, step three, the processing demonstrations. These were demonstrations with expert processors with um, both uh, poor and high quality varieties. Um, from there, you could get processing and sensory characteristics, diagnostic measurements uh, and indicators, some gender and livelihoods information. Step four, the main data that we want to extract is around the CATA table. So it's there's no new characteristics that were identified through this process, but through the CATA table results, we're able to see how important those characters are characteristics are with their likability scores. So, foof. <laughs> I should say it's also the, the information was disaggregated by gender and region. So we also have important data here. So I think this slide is a really good reference point when you say, actually, what is the key information we need to decide on a product profile? It's really triangulating these data points. So, <laughs> Professor Akosi, this is a, a boiled yam from Benin. This is a, an example table from his state of knowledge report of the important high quality characteristics at the different stages. Uh, step two for boiled yam, you can see that he's listed the high quality characteristics that were found through the individual interviews, uh, the indicators of how, how those high quality characteristics were assessed and the priority of those characteristics. So in this circumstance, they use citations. So how many times did an individual raise this characteristic as being important uh, and then being able to prioritize that? Uh, they also did significance testing. So you can see here, brown peel was significantly cited more often by women than by men. Alternatively, rough or shaggy or hump peel was cited much more often by men. And I just wonder if that's, <laughs> Women didn't cite it very, very often because it might have been harder to peel or process. This is an example of Gary Eba from Nigeria and IITA. Again, their step two data. And here it kind of shows different types of indicators, uh, descriptions of those characteristics, how they are prioritized by focus group discussions, 
the varieties associated with them and low quality characteristics and uh, uh, low quality varieties. This is an example from NRCRI. Again, step two, what they did is they pulled out information that was important according to those gender and livelihood assessments. So for example, for their impact on labor and drudgery, what they found is that positively, that branching was found to smother reading, weeding and reducing women's time exertion and cost of weeding. Um, so you could see if you put this together in a summary report, it could really help the design team to figure out what they should prioritize and why. This is another example of step three. So this is from IITA again, where through the processing demonstrations, they were able to complete this table. And then step four, this is the consumer testing. Uh, and here is boiled yam, the kata table. So in the column 116 to 198, you could see the kata table scores that are associated with those characteristics. Again, the higher the number, the higher citation, meaning it's an important characteristic uh, uh, for acceptability. I hope I'm explaining this okay, because I'm not a food scientist. Uh, and this is, you know, this is jean uh she will be missed. <laughs> um, after you've compiled this information in the report, which again is hopefully a copy and paste job, it's important to triangulate. And this is really where I'm learning for, from Professor Akosi. Um, he gave a great presentation to the advisory committee, and maybe we should organize to have that again, is that he extracted the key data from the different steps and triangulated it. So I'll just show you here, is that he's color coded it here. You could see easy to peel in green. So that showed up three times in the different steps. And then he could match that, you know, um, that to other characteristics, easy to slight, uh, easy to slice, uh, the cooking water consistency. So in, in his example, what he said is characteristics that were cited at least twice out of the different steps were considered very important. So it was shortlisted basically for the product profile. Okay, and you can see here, this is how he's, he's made the kind of um, short list of characteristics. And you can see at the, the end product stage, the kata frequency tables there. So I put watch this space from a favorite <laughs> comic of mine, Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, the problem with the future is that it keeps turning into the present <laughs> because um, yes, we, 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 we need to, to work on this quite quickly, but uh, um, we've already made quite a bit of progress. So I hope I could just take a few more minutes now to, just to wrap up is after you've prepared the summary report, again, we convene the multidisciplinary design team. So who does this include? Well, we're recommending, of course, it'd be the work package one team. So the people that were in the field doing the work, the food scientists, the gender specialists, the economists, the work package two and breeders, perhaps work package four at the partner level. It'd be really great if we could get work package one and work package two representation at the project level, along with the product champion to really help us in this prioritization process. So the steps are basically circulate the evidence base, circulate the, the summary report, book a meeting in, I, I recommend a doodle poll and I can absolutely help facilitate this process along with my colleagues. And then document the discussion and the decisions made using the guidance. So we do have written guidance on this. And again, this is just showing again, the product that we're aiming to produce. So the last phase is something that we're still kind of working out, which is applying the G plus assessment. Now the G plus assessment would really be an adaptation of tools that have already developed and quite accepted and broadly used by, by the gender um, and RTV community. And essentially it means assessing each of the characteristics based on two tools. First, that we do no harm. So none of the characteristics cause any harm. Second, that it actually contributes to making a positive benefit. And if it has this, it, it, in the latter instance, it would be ranked higher. You score each of the characteristics, you look at the scores as, as a whole, and complete the documentation with the scores and finalize the food product profile on the basis of those scores. 
So I have to go through it very quickly right now because it's we don't have time. But this is just a snapshot of what the assessment looks like and the scoring is, is at the bottom of the screen. So again, it's focusing on drudgery, displacement of income generation activities, which are all very much in line what we do. So what we're saying could be a process is that when we get the final list of characteristics, perhaps they're 10, perhaps they five, that we go through the questionnaires on those five characteristics or 10 characteristics to ensure that they A, do no harm, and B, actually could they contribute to positive benefits. And those are the scores where the red arrows pointing, that's where you would put the scores. Oh, good. So just the final points. So we have presented these to the advisory committee, to project and work package leaders, and also some members of the gender working group. We have also developed guidance and templates available to support people through the process. I know that Vivian Polar, um, Tessie and I have spoken to Vivian about what support we could get from G+ in terms of, you know, how do we adapt the tools, make it um, a less onerous process for RTB Foods so we could do a quick, quick assessment. Um, and also um, Vivian said that there may be support uh, from their end about a publication, a group publication on our results of using the G Plus tools. Uh, so that's great incentive, I think, for us to, to work towards it. Uh, so f I guess the next steps is really to hear if there's any feedback on this process, if there's anything we need to adapt. And then it's really us about work package leaders is making meetings to discuss timelines and specifics with each of the partners. Um, and that's it. So if, if anyone has any questions or comments, I'm happy to take them. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. And thanks to the, to the group for uh, working on this uh, free phase process, which actually is key. It is crucial to complete one of our major expected outputs in RTB foods, meaning the RTB food product profiles. I see many improvements were made uh, from the first draft that was presented to the advisory committee at the end of June, and in particular inputs from the, from the G plus tool were integrated. Um, and time estimation as well uh, for, the, for each of the three phases. And I, I think that this shows very well that it is feasible without much uh, investment in terms of time. The key thing is to have the good people involved, meaning the good, um, the good disciplines, a good representation of the different disciplines um, at, around the table and in particular for phase two and three. Um, so I think we'll take time for questions because there should, uh, there should be questions, I'm sure of that. Um, we are a bit late, but uh, it, it's so crucial that we'll, we'll allocate time to, all, to address all questions. Um, there's a comment from Keith, um, but it's, it's more a comment. There was a comment first from Dominique uh, saying that uh, what we need to define then are the limits of acceptability for each of the prioritized traits or let's say characteristics, the limits, the thresholds. Do you want to react, Laura, on this first? Uh, no, I, I don't think that is actually included in, in the methodology so far. I mean, we've got the results from, well, first of all, sorry, thank you, Keith. I'm so glad that you're here, Keith, um, to attend. That was a, that was a, a comment from Dominique, sorry. That oh, was sorry. Comment. And awesome. then I, I moved to Keith's <laughs> one, sorry. That's no, no problem. Sorry, I'm a bit, but Dominique, it's also nice that you're here. Um, uh, I, I don't think the thresholds were identified in this step. It was more the results of the CATA table, which determine how much the, the likability scores is. But I'd probably invite my food science colleagues to perhaps comment on that. Dominique, do you want to say something more to add something else? Yes, I think the, the key is to work rapidly with work package two teams to try to evaluate uh, this threshold. The, the way to do that is uh, mixing uh, the sensory evaluation with the sensory testing to try to evaluate with the panel and with the consumer testing what are the threshold of each trait that we need to focus on. Because we need to evaluate these traits and really we need to know exactly where we are if we have a response in Newton or in uh, color or something, we need to know exactly what is the acceptable uh, uh, 
uh, value or, or more more acceptable value to to be focused in the selection of the new new hybrids. Hi, Dominique and uh, Glantin. This is Aurélie. Yes, Aurélie. What I've understood is uh, the aim of this uh, worker product profile is more uh, to produce a list of characteristics and then the other work packages will take that on and it will work on the establishing the limits because I think for us to look at thresholds is going to be a bit tricky. So we can, we've got the results for the cat, from the CATA, so on the, on the end product, so we can definitely include that. But then uh, I think working with W uh, work package two and uh, the other work packages, it it's, it's looks to me that it's another step uh, further along the line. Um, if I can go to Keith's comments, uh, Keith is mentioning that this is critical because uh, while commercial products have a voice uh, through paid advertising, there is rarely a group who speaks for the products eaten by those on low incomes, and particularly women and the young. Um, and, and, and most of the time, commercial products are often less healthy as well. Um, there's a question from Graham. Uh, Graham is asking if... Um, you are considering or if there's any possibility to estimate the costs of developing product profile it would be helpful he says uh do, do you mean sorry graham i i agree with you do you mean in terms of how much the field work and the research costs that went into developing the product profile yeah that's it yeah I have an idea and uh, if it could be done the opt what would be optimal and maybe we uh, had this idea if we could do like mm, quick and dirty, reduce exactly. costs, what would be the range of costs? Yeah, but I think I'm, that'd be very helpful if you want to go down this route to get an idea of what it might cost. An idea. Obviously, it's going to be a bit contextual, right? Of course. Yeah, very much contextual. It, from my perspective, I don't know if Dominique or anyone wants to come in. I think that would be a very important next step. Um, we still uh, missed an opportunity at the annual meeting to do a good reflection on lessons learned. And I think what, what I'd be interested in from a comprehensive lesson learned product um, exercise on this is to see basically what we could cut out because it is very labor intensive and it is expensive, but it's very robust. <laughs> so um, I know some people like speaking to Jan Lowe, um, many people felt the processing demonstration, so that would be step three, was extremely important um, and, and came up with some really, really fantastic data, actually spending time sitting with, with really cute rural level processors that have been doing this for their whole life, that they were getting the best quality information from that. But then, you know, you, that's a trade-off between having a, a larger sampling frame with step two, which actually um, allows for some quantification of, of the characteristics that people preferred. But I think, I think that's a very good point of something we could prioritize for the next date. There's a very practical question from Claire. Um, regarding the next step for the implementation of this approach, this three-phase approach, would it be helpful to identify three or four case studies to fully test the methodology before Ooh. extending broadly to all the RTB foods products? Again, if I could answer that, but I'd really welcome other people to, to put... Um, um, their thought, their thoughts forward, is that we we do we don't have these case studies polished as of yet. As in, I wouldn't want to circulate them, but they would be we would be able to circulate two or three of them quite quickly as examples of how they could work. But because each each team had to kind of adapt the methods and the sampling frame to the resources they had to um, you know various constraints they had in country. Um, so every, every, every team will have to do something slightly different, um, but the principles, principles are the same. But we do have case studies ready that we could help. I don't think we have, and this is a question to Dominique, um, the opportunity to wait too long before it's rolled out completely. Yeah. But that would be the best practice. I hope that answers. <laughs> Thank you. 
Any other question? Work package two people, food scientists. Do you have question requirements? Is it all clear? Or do you feel like you, you would need some more information mm -hmm. to develop the tests, the, the, the protocols, the lab for protocols, let's say, which will be the next step? I, I, I can come in shortly. Yes, please. Um, yeah, we, we, we need to find uh, time maybe, maybe to, to, to book some, uh, some meetings to, to go more in details into how to link the, the results of work package one and, uh, and the methods of work package two. One thing is that since the beginning of RTD Foods, uh, the, the teams in work package two have already developed different tests and different SOPs. So it would be more adapting or linking the, the profile of work package one with the existing tests rather than developing new tests given that certainly food is already uh, in, in here. If I could just make, make a point to that, um, and I don't think it, I w had the chance to say it in the presentation, is, is that it is year four, and <laughs> this is the product profile. But each of the steps, and this is how it was designed, um, was each step fed into <laughs> um, what the other work packages were doing. So at the at the country level, at the partner level, um, the Motoke team was using data from the first and second steps to already feed into to what their colleagues were doing. Um, so in, in in my opinion, and I would I don't want to speak for the whole team, but I think some people do share it with me that we don't feel that the process was in any, in any way held up. That, that people were able to get an idea of what the most important characteristics were as each step was completed. Yeah, for, for, for Bulkes server, we, we, we got the information from our package one uh, last year and we, we tried to adapt. For other profiles, uh, I'm less up to date on, on the interaction between our package one and our package two, but mm -hmm. pro probably the, there are interactions. Mm -hmm. Obviously, all the team have a good knowledge before the project, and they know that some traits are of big, uh, big importance, and they need to develop a standard of operation on this trait because the, most of the lab who are part of RTB Food have a, a really good knowledge of the product, and uh, it's not necessary to wait the three years of. Uh, the production of the product profile to begin to develop the test. And many labs have developed uh, tests that they are uh, online with this uh, product profile. Obviously, some new traits appear and uh, we need to develop uh, other SOP to cover all the, the traits, but all the team need to work together to, to, to be ready at the end of the project. Just to add on what Dominique is saying here, from step one, so that was done in the first year, the state of knowledge. So it was a literature review, but also key informant interviews, and that was to capture the knowledge of the team. As Dominique rightly said, the team members and their colleagues had a vast amount of knowledge that wasn't documented. So those key informant interviews were to find, to interview people, to, to interview, um, you know, we even said, um, leaders of women's producer associations or processing associations. So do key informant interviews to get a quick, quick idea of what the important characteristics are. So that was done in the very first year. There's a, a question from Michael. Um, from, I guess, from the preliminary results or the most advanced studies, did you identify any effects of regional location within the country for the prioritization? that might influence the decisions for the breeders, uh, let's say target different food product profiles according to the region? Okay, I, th I think that's an excellent question. And we often say gender here, uh, as that was a key part of our desegregation, but actually it was gender and region. So where you see the gender and livelihoods on this table in the, the bottom row there, where we have desegregated data, we have that by region as well. Um, so we were able to find um, significant differences for some products. I, I probably would say 
let us report back soon because I would like a better idea. Having just kind of completed the gender output report, I, I know that area of data better. But um, perhaps maybe one of my work package one colleague wants to give an example. I know the Gari Eba, for sure there was regional differences. I mean, just their state of knowledge um, report found, I think it was four different regional variations of Gari. Ella, do you want to answer to, compl to complement? Uh, we had, we had uh, two, two, we had, let me see, one, two, well, three regions in Ghana and one in Cameroon. Mm. And then you see that, that there, there are differences in, in, in the, in, in, in small differences, but not, not too, too big differences. But, mm -hmm. but they are still, they still have to be highlighted here yeah, because if, if you compare, for example, the Southwest to the Southeast, it's almost another country if you compare to other countries because Nigeria is so big. So the, the fact that it's in one country doesn't mean make, 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 it's, a, it's not a reason to lump it together. Yeah, I think Benin as well. I think Noel might have uh, results as well that show regional variations. Cameroon, Nigeria, yes, as Dominique said, yeah. But there, okay. but there are very key and cross-cutting things that have come, that have come out in, in all regions. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, they don't make major differences. You see that, that people like the same characteristics, but the, some prior to uh, prioritize uh, one a little bit more than the other, and that it's mainly related to how Gary is uh, is prepared into how it's processed. Yeah. How it's processed. Yeah. Not something to be bred for, but important to check. An important result. Yeah, but, but we, we also see we have also identified here at IT at the lab uh, the lab protocols the SOPs for for for. for Processing Gary and making Abba, we have two different uh, protocols. So there's one for the Southwest, uh, like products that are uh, less fermented, and there's one for the Southwest. Mm. So when we when things will be evaluated, the both both of them will be produced. So, and those both those, both those protocols will also be calibrated based on. on WP5 work that will also happen in, in in actually in all three in all three locations in Nigeria and Southwest Benue and, and also. Thank you, Bella. No, you, Noel, do you want to to add on what uh, Bella just said? Yes, uh, it, in our uh, sites we find uh, some differences related to location for some of. Uh, characteristic we, we identify. That's all. Uh, that's okay. Dominique is asking, do, should we organize a meeting with all product champions to, to, to start to launch the product profile um, elaboration, or, or let's say consolidation? How do you see the next step, Laura, in practice? Oy. <laughs> Uh, for me, I feel like like that's a bit premature, um, but it depends on what you mean by the product profile elaboration. For me, I think the next step really is to have one-to-one -one meetings with each of the teams. I think there was some feedback in the consultations that this was quite an oner onerous process. Um, some people have four product profiles, for example, um, and, you know, the work package has moved on. So it's really, I think, about one-to-one -one meetings about saying why this process is important and how, how we could streamline the activities so we make it so, so it isn't that much work. But it's a process that's, that's documented and transparent and, and thought through. Um, and if I could help in any way with that. The product profiles at this stage were to be developed for the, the, the product in that particular region. So one would be developed for NCRI Gari, one would be developed for um, the Gari uh, with, with IITA. So it's based on the teams that are already working. I think then the next step would be to, to, to meet with the product profile champions, but hopefully the champions are already involved in the meetings anyway. But I think to, to lift it up to the kind of product level, which crosses different landscapes, I think that's a step that happens after. I'm not too sure. I'm, I, 
open to hearing guidance on, on that. Uh, Laura, if you're uh, going back to the slide where the three phases are with the estimated sure. time, um, I, I have a question. How do you, can you mm. clarify the responsibilities just to make sure who is responsible for which phase? I mean, who, yeah. in terms of, is there one person responsible in each work package, one team? Um, how do you see that? I, again, that's a good question, but I think it's for the teams. So in the one-to-one -one meeting, we would work out, okay, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm being very pragmatic, <laughs> which is just about, there's no blanket rule, uh, but to say, you know, who can work with me on this? And I know, for example, so we've reached out to Vivian Polar, um, who has been leading the, the G plus tools. Um, so she said she'd be able to offer, or perhaps we could offer some kind of training in partnership about how you do this uh, uh, kind of adapted assessment using those tools. So we wait, may want to have those, those um, and there may be a publication as well. So we may have our social scientists, which may have incentive to kind of lead this process and to want to, to do it. Then in other contexts, you may have a food scientist, which has more ownership over it. So because the teams are interdisciplinary, we have to really consult them on who, who, how they want to participate, if they want to participate in this process, how and who would lead it, I think is the question. Sorry, that's not very okay. clear. <laughs> but, but in your mind, it does not have to be specifically um, someone from Work Package 1. Oh, I would, I would absolutely say it okay. should be someone from the Work Package 1, but then you, you have some circumstances where people may not have the time and, and yeah, so we, I think we have to be flexible. It would be great if it was the work package one lead who we've been working with um, since the beginning, but it may not be like that in all circumstances. Great. And I really wanted to talk a bit more about the G, the G plus work and the, obviously I'm a gender specialist. That's my, that's my stick, <laughs> <laughs> but it may have to be, um, in a separate uh, meeting and, and when we've worked uh, things out a bit more with the G plus team. But I think it, it presents a really good opportunity for the, the social scientists, I think, um, to be involved in this process. I saw that um, Priscilla had feedbacks regarding this G plus tool. Yeah, she um, always has great feedback, yeah. Priscilla, do you want to, to say a word here or do you feel Please. like having this discussion afterwards? Hi, yeah. Hi. <laughs> no, I, I think that it's better to have the discussion on the side, maybe mm -hmm. afterwards. I, I think this platform is a, big, is a bit too big for that, mm -hmm. if we really need to get into the nitty gritty of, uh, of that work. So I think it's better to have it separate. Just, just to pick on two things that you said, Priscilla, because I think they were absolutely right in, in the feedback. One is to absolutely involve breeders, even in preparing the synthesis report. So, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> actually yeah. getting them in and saying, like, is this the right table, at, you know, at, at the country level? Is this a table? Do you want anything else? And involving them in this whole process. Yeah, from, I from think the beginning. Yeah, I think it's very crucial to already involve breeders because they are the ones who are going to implement, right, and use this product profile in the end. So I think it's possible that there are things that we might miss out. Um, but then also it has to be something that's usable to them and easy for them exactly. I guess, to decipher uh, also. Um, so I, I think it's crucial. To, to involve them earlier on in the process rather than waiting uh, when there's already a summary document. There are mm -hmm. things that can already be shared and they can already give feedback on, and then we can work on them and uh, make the necessary changes. Yeah. Uh, and just one, I'm picking on Priscilla, but, but she always comes up with brilliant feedback. Another thing she said is, is that the G plus tools, it, it, they can be quite time intensive. And, and absolutely, that was the feedback from the gender working group as well. And what we're going, we're thinking about is just using one of the tools and adapting it. So it, so yeah, so it addresses that point. So I just wanted to say that to you, Priscilla. Um, cause I think that's also what, what other people are thinking as well. So we are going to try to adapt that to, to address it. 
But I want yeah. to add that okay. uh, I want to add that indeed the, the G plus two is, is is a complete integrated approach to customer and product profile. Yes. What we, what we have here is we have we will have, at the end we have a listing of traits based on all the steps. And you, basically what we can take from the G plus tool is just go trade by trade and see the, the if, if if stressing that trade, what kind of effect will that have on, on women? What kind of you have to just think through you stress that trade, what can happen? Uh, what can be the possible benefits for women and what can be the possible benefits for harm for men, men or women. But uh, it's really thinking through uh, and that's that brings in the social science information also in that report from, from which gives you clues what, what might happen. So that that's not very complicated. You don't have to bring in the whole customer and product. Program. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Exactly. Really, but, but we all need to take this, and this is not complicated. This this can be explained to anybody in, in not much time. Yeah, I think that's what I was trying to say also, that we can pick, you know, the certain aspects that we can focus on. It doesn't have to be everything. So mm -hmm. like this do no harm and positive, positive benefits part is fine. I think it's, it's, not, it's not hard at all. And we already have the traits. It's just um, assessing whether or, not, or the, whether or not the trait does harm or has positive benefits and we look at Men. And sometimes it's not very clear if it, it might yeah. have a benefit, and, and then you say it, the buying benefit might be larger than the little mm -hmm. harm that it can do in certain things. Like cassava, you have if, if you have higher dry matter, it will be a little bit less easy to peel, which can do harm. But at the same time, women also express we don't want the roots to be easy, too easy to peel because then we know that it's not giving enough product. So that kind of things are there to consider. But, with, but I also wanted to say with regards to bringing in readers, uh, we brought in, in an internal discussion, which was a kind of kind of, kind of meeting to, to prioritize these traits. It was a meeting between World Package One and food scientists. And we brought in readers. And readers were just saying, well, what can we measure? What can we measure? So they, they were kind of like, Disturbing, so to say, because it, the food scientists have to come up with that measurable traits. You know, it's a discussion between World Package One and Two. And if you if you have that, then defined, then the breeders will be much more interested in discussion because for them they will want to have measurable and prioritized traits that can and, 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 and protocols on how to to operationalize them. So I don't know. You don't want to waste too much time with readers on saying, well, what, okay, you want to focus on color. What is color? Or we want to go with moldability. How do you measure moldability? What is needed? What that kind of thing? You know? Thank you, Bella. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, Laura, you're mentioning in the chat box um, that you've been discussing with Vivian on the possibility to have a webinar focused on the G plus tool and how it could be used or partly used. Um, to come to to complement the the work package one food product profile exactly and maybe um, so so the G plus tool I, I think as 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 Bella already pointed out there's there's different parts to it um, so it's really actually about raising awareness because many people in work package one RTB foods um, have piloted, been involved in piloting and various things with, with G plus. So it's about raising awareness that we're going to use and adapt a component of that. So it's not actually, and it doesn't involve more field work. I think some people also felt that it, it was about more research. No, 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 no. This is none of this putting the profile product profile together is about new research. It's really using what we have, and it's just a way to think things through. As we said, that the process of creating this is extremely important because we're really addressing that interdisciplinarity, which is not just about you know picking characteristics and stuff, but doing so in a very thoughtful uh, way. Great, great. I think it's time. Um, no more comments in the chat box. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Uh, so we see that there's 
still a little bit of work, but not that much at the end. Uh, so when do you do you think you could share the method with a with a whole group? Um, do you have any timeline in in your mind? I think if if what would what would suit I think us best uh, the working group um, is maybe we we. Um, circulate uh, the draft tools and maybe ask for feedback within a week or so. But, but pe keeping in mind that people will have to make adaptations based on their circumstances, but we do, we would like kind of a consistent approach within, within reason. Um, uh, and then it's one-to-one -one conversation. So I guess I'll just be engaging one-to-one because -one I feel like that's much more effective than kind of larger group things and actually going through the guidance and and planning it out realistically when it can happen. And um, I think, yeah, so I guess what I would say is I'd like to circulate these next week, get give people a week to feedback on it, mm -hmm. and then say like, okay, this is, this is the approach. Um, but all in this while, I'll be doing one-to-one -one meetings, I think, with people. But I think the key thing is how do we get this design team together, given our busy schedules, and how it's it's impossible sometimes to get meetings between three people. How are we going to get this group of people together to decide it if we want these done so quickly? So people will really have to prioritize this and move, um, which may be a challenge. But let's be positive. <laughs> yeah. And again, that's why it may be um, important to appoint someone um, or to ask the team to appoint someone to lead the process. Otherwise, if there I is no, that's resp great. no responsibility, it would, it could uh, never happen. I think that's a great, a great idea and something that I didn't actually, I just kind of assumed. I think that's a good, a good point. And just to clarify, so um, regarding work package one coordination, Let's say you are coordinating this activity, or uh, is it you plus Aurélie plus Laurent who has been who have been taking over from Geneviève for activity five? How how do you consider providing support to the teams, even one by one support, but who within yeah. the package one coordination? I think um, we'd probably. For, for myself as a social scientist, and I'm very much interested in this process and documenting how decisions are made and listening in to how these traits are, we're, we're discussing and prioritizing these traits and, and how the conversations are going. So I'd like to be in many as I can, um, but I think we may have to split up between us. Um, but myself and and um, either Orly and Laurent, I think would be great Um so absolutely having a food scientist there and, and myself. And then I think Work Package 2 colleagues, Terry and Christian also wanted to, to join. I'm not sure if that's, um, but we may have to have some kind of prioritization of, of, of people because it will get impossible to schedule with um, everybody. So, yes. So the answer is there will be some, we, we're asking teams to include a Work Package 1 coordinator. Okay. And I would like to be involved myself because I'm curious. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Great. Okay, thank you very much, Laura. And thanks to the whole group working on this method. Thanks a lot uh, for this presentation. And uh, we are all waiting for uh, the, the first draft, or let's say the most advanced draft, maybe Absolutely. hopefully by the, by the end of next week or during next week. Oh, you, you should have it probably Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, good. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks a lot, uh, Laura. Okay. And thank you to the working group and Noel and Orly um, and Laurent. They, yeah, been amazing. So thank okay. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, good presentation. Thank you, Noel. Okay, so uh, thanks for joining today's webinar. Um, so as a reminder, there will be no webinar uh, in August. So we will meet again at the end of, of August on the uh, Friday 27th for a presentation from Gérard Ngo from Carbab Cameroon, who is also Work Package 5 leader. And Gérard will present the RTB Foods approach for the evaluation of uh, advanced RTB hybrids. So it's time for the presentation of uh, the different methods. Uh, we have been presenting the 
the work package one uh, approach or method, then in August we'll be introduced to the work package five methodology for uh, participatory evaluation of advanced clones. Um, so thanks again for joining uh, the memorial of Genevieve uh, for those who, who were there before time. Again, if you wish to show your support to Geneviève's family, do not hesitate to send your messages to me or to Dominique. Before the end of next week, we will consolidate, we will compile and consolidate a, um, a document and will share with the Yonen, uh, who is Geneviève's son. Thanks again uh, and um, take care. <laughs>